What's the time? Back on. I'm so back like, on now. Just let me do it. I used to like this. Yeah, just, like, just, just like, like in two seconds. Whatever. Like, but they're like, don't you ever, because now you're messing up. Like, what if we like get Like, I get called into the meeting to be like, told, no, you can't. Don't move like, a bit. Like, now you Africa and a very warm welcome to you. My name is Bali Satembe and you are tuned in to Afternoon Express on S3. Now we are not alone in the kitchen on this masterclass. We have got some of our faves touching base with us as we focus on all things baking. Please help me welcome Chef Dumi Mukhwa. But I'm happy to be here. It's a Tuesday and I know that whenever we're coming onto the show, we're going to be giving people something great. But I'm overly excited about today because it focuses on something I absolutely love but cannot always do, and that's baking. Absolutely. And to help us, of course, we had to call on the big guns. I'm talking about none other than Chef Chart. It's always so amazing to see you. Oh, it's lovely to be back in the kitchen and bringing a fabulous masterclass all about baking, which is apparently what I know. Absolutely. <laughs> and you know what? It's not as easy as it sounds. And today is a very, very special day for all of us. Because if you look at your calendar, it's one of those 2202022. Mm. And two is my favorite number. So you know how I'd like to say, do, 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 do. <laughs> That's the song we're singing the entire day today. But we're keeping the good vibes going because, I mean, if a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down, imagine the wonders a masterclass of Afternoon Express can do, especially when the theme today is baking. Sweet treats and savory nibbles are on the menu as we are joined by celebrity Chef Chart, who will be helping us prepare the perfect chew pastry. Later on, we don our berets as we make a creme patissier and a decadent chocolate ganache cake. There's even more in store on this Afternoon Express Masterclass, so set your timer for 60 minutes and let's get baking. If you need the details to any of today's baking recipes, please do head over to our website at afternoonexpress.co.za. Now, have you ever tried a chew pastry and just couldn't get it right? Well, this next recipe shows us the easiest way to improve on our baking skills. From a, um, Dumi, Dumi, you help me, you say this perfectly. Profiterole. Profiteroles. <laughs> From profiteroles to eclairs, everyone needs a little help in the kitchen. And that's why Chef Charles will be showing us how to perfect the art of shoe pastry and the many ways to use it. Well, can I say, phew, you talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. 
<laughs> anyway, absolutely. Shoe pastry, eclairs, profiteroles, and they've all got their sort of names and their sort of demeanors there. We know an eclair saying that is long, and there are lovely shoe buns which are lovely and round, which we've got there. Standard. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more there. I just wanna get the first bit going in. So I just warmed up my pan here. I'm gonna add in some water to start with there. So pop into your water as well as your sugar. Now, you don't have to put sugar in because you could actually make a savory version mm. of this as well by adding like a lovely cheese filling. So think of like a, a cheese sauce in in instead of a, a crimp patisserie, which we're talking about, you know, which we'll be doing a little bit later on and you're talking about just now. And then a little bit of vanilla is gonna go into that as well. And then in with our butter, mm. okay? So what we're gonna do now is just melt the butter. Really important, please, South Africa, is do not bring this to a rapid boil where you're gonna start to split the fat and the proteins. Mm. It is very important that the emulsification stays within the protein and the fat content of the butter. Okay, so okay. we don't want it to split, we want it to no. all stay together. So heat on there, I'm just gonna crank that up now there, and just allow that to basically dissolve the butter, emulsifies with that, that water, and then to that, what we're gonna be doing is adding in our flour, which is basically making your roux part. So mm -hmm. remember, we make a, a basic white sauce, a bechamel, which is your, your, your flour and your, and your butter. It's exactly what we're doing here, but with the addition of water, because that's gonna give us the wonderful elasticity of it. Why we also heat up this water is this is gonna make it a lot softer, a lot lighter, but also it will allow us to actually dry the skin out sufficiently that we can actually put a filling in ah. as well. So that's why you wanna heat this up to a point of where you're gonna to start to you know, loosen and, and start to cook the, the starch content in here. Okay, so Chef Charts, be, being able to make a shoe pastry seems very higher grade, if I may say, and a lot of people just don't get it right. So in the process that you're doing, just now for part one, what would you say the key is to getting that right before we touch base with Domi? Well, I, I think, you, you know, you've got, to, you've got to get this mixture dissolved or the, em, emulsified mm -hmm. at, a, at a temperature still warm enough that's going to go into the flour, and then you are got to make sure this comes off the heat and you mix it together that there's no lumps. So get in there and get working so my arms like... Really, it's pumped up and ready to mix. So those are a few two rules quickly there. And, and also, Chef, just I want to ask you as well, since we're doing this and you're adding sugar, do you also then want to make sure the sugar dissolves before you add the next Absolutely. step? Absolutely. Mm. So very important to incorporate that because you've got to break that sugar down. You don't want little little pockets of, of sugar crystals in there because it's basically, in essence, going to crystallise. So again, that sugar breaking it down. But as I said, leave out the sugar because then you can have a savoury version of it. A little pinch of salt actually helps a lot as well. Not because you want saltiness, but that aids with the, the flavour of the actual, uh, you know, profiterole or shoe bun, whatever you are actually making okay. at, the end, at the end of the day. Okay. Or, I mean, this goes into so many other things. You can start, you know, start making it into churros and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, there's lots of things that this can sort of, you know, develop and change, change into. So, if you have a look there, that's all sort of melted. Happy with that? Yeah. Just about, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's into there and then off with the heat and then into the flour. Okay. So the flour needs to go in just like that. So let's just sort of get that into there and then let's start just working that little bit by little bit to get that paste. And using a wooden spoon, very important, not a whisk because the whisk is gonna catch all these things mm -hmm. in the actual balloon part of it. Remember it's off the heat and we're just gonna start incorporating that and it's gonna get thicker and thicker and globular. Don't worry, we're using a wooden spoon at this stage so we don't have to worry about you know thinking, oh, it's gonna be lumpy and all the rest of it. Yeah. You're gonna get in there and you're gonna start actually working it. Now this is very important because I'm gonna be talking this part with our chocolate cake a little bit later on. This has got like sort of a jelly consistency. Mm. So remember that because this is gonna help with the lightness, the softness, the fluffiness of everything on here. So I'm going to keep working this and you're going to work this until it starts to cool down and then all the important part is what Tumi is going to be showing us what to do next with our actual shoe pastry. All right so in essence what I've got here is what you've made but it's just been chilled because now we're going to start adding our eggs into this mixture. In essence what we're doing now is we're going to give the, the shoe pastry body because as you've seen chef added the flour into there there's no raising agent there's nothing that actually allows it to you know fill up. So this is where the eggs come in. I'm, I'm going to add them one at a time and the reason for this is you don't want the dough to be too runny. You want it to be as, as firm as possible so that you're able to pipe the mixture in. And then you also don't want to make sure that you end up adding too much and it's too runny. You want to be able to manage the dough itself. And like I mentioned, this, the egg itself, will then be the, the, the raising agent. You'll see once we cut into one of them, you'll actually be able to see like um, some 
spaces in there, some little holes in there, which is in essence where the air came in and the steaming of that. So I'm just gonna keep adding um, these eggs into this mixture. But Chef, I just wanna find out, right? Let's just say someone wants an alternative to say make a shoe pastry, but let's just say a vegetarian or vegan option. What um, binding agent or, or, or ingredient would they add to replace the eggs in this instance? Well, so you, one thing you, as you mentioned early on, which is very important, is the raising agent of this. Now, you're going down a, you know, quite a, a rocky road when you're starting to take <laughs> out the eggs and, and the butter contents. So you need that yeah. fat content, but you need a raising agent that's going to help in there. So you, generally, what you want to do is well, you're going to have a, sort of like, start looking at a combination of um, you know bicarbonate baking powder that's going to give that kind of ri rise uh, mm -hmm. rise to it. But you can start adding that wonderful creaminess. You can start looking at things like, like coconut milk as well. Yes. Will also have it. So you can you know it's going to give something a lot richer, a lot sort of denser in its uh, in its sort of application, I guess, which which the eggs are and giving us that wonderful richness. So remember, eggs are not just a raisin agent, it's mm -hmm. also a richness, a richness, it's a fat, it's giving mm -hmm. flavor as well. Mm -hmm. So you can add things in like a coconut milk to actually start to bind all that together, but you need that raisin agent to give it some likes and lightness and some fluffiness At to go with it as, as well. Mm -hmm. um, oil as well, but you gotta be very careful because that starts changing the actual um, heating yeah, actual, levels that mm. you actually get in the, in the product as well. So the thing like a coconut oil is a much lower temperature to actually cook with, which is the same for mm -hmm. eggs as well. When people say, you know, yes, oil's great, in a cake or something, but you know, we've got to be very careful on that there careful. as well. Absolutely. Okay, so after Dumi's um, egg station, we've made sure that the foundation of the shoe pastry is taken care of. Now comes the piping part because we want our shoe pastries to kind of look like these little treats. Absolutely. So what you do is once the mixture's cooled down, it's popped into a piping bag. Now, if you haven't got a, a you know a disposable piping bag like we have here, or you haven't got one yourself, a good old Ziploc bag. You know those freezer bags? Mm. Those are a great version. Or if you really, I've even had to use plastic shopping bags. Yeah. You need to. I was so actually going to ask. I only have those plastic shopping bags, um, so we can use those. But also, I mean, it would be ideal to just get your hands yeah. on a good piping bag. So what's very important with the piping bag is you're going you're gonna to start twisting at one end, and you can see the mixture starting to go up there. You actually twist. You don't just squeeze. You you know, most people, what they do is they grab here and they go, Ugh. Yes. Don't squeeze. This hand guides, all right? So your left hand always guides. This one, you're going to keep sort of twisting. Now, depending on what you want to do, if you want to do sort of like in a, a clear, which is probably the easiest, um, little trip, tick, there. <laughs> Check, whatever, a little bit underneath there, and that just sticks down your yeah. piece of baking paper on there, just like that there. And then up to you. So you're going to be just starting to squeeze very slightly, and then even pressure from the top always. This is very light here, yeah? very light here, and evenly go like that there. Okay, right. stunning. Okay. So once you've piped it and it is ready to go into the oven, what is the baking time and what is the temperature? So you want 200 degrees, so you want nice and hot because you're going to get that air in there to Puff it up. It's really got to sort of jump, jump up there until it's golden brown. 15, 20 minutes, depending on your on your oven there. Just a quick one. When you get something like that, that's sort of stuck up there, take a little bit of water and just dab the mm. top of it down, and that'll give you a lovely surface. So play around with it. You know, your mixtures might vary depending on the size of your eggs and things like that. But just work it like that, and then just dab on top. And put it down like that there. Okay, so it seems as if we're halfway done with creating this magic. I mean, at the end of the day, the shoe pastry needs something to be filled with in the inside. But if you want to find out how to get the foundation right, just head over to afternoonexpress.co.za for the full ingredients. This this looks absolutely delicious. A true treat. Now on social media, we have not forgotten about you. What we're saying is ready, sit, bake. Now baking takes time, skill and lots of fun. But what are your secret baking tips? Use that hashtag Afternoon Express in all of your comments. It is a masterclass after all. So if you do not have any baking tips, worry not. That's why our chefs are here to guide you through the process. Now I settle for basic custard when you can enjoy an even creamier and decadent creme patissier. We'll be perfecting and accompanying this delicious shoe pastry with some when we return.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. And this masterclass is all about baking, making sure that we get it down to a science. Now, Chef, um, you always are helping us. And this one is a little special. The entire show, we're focusing on baking treats. Absolutely. Well, oh, creme pat is like the sort of basic. It's the foundation. So I think most of us at home are familiar with a white sauce, basically. Yes. You know, so that's what we all, you know, understand in the, in the savory realm of, of things. But in the baking world, this is it. So in essence, think of it as a thick Custard. Yummy! Well, a creme patissier, as Chef has said, is a decadent and delicious version of custard. It is a great recipe to have on hand. It makes a great accompaniment for cake, shoe buns, and even to have on its own as a dessert. Now, today we're going to be using our Clover Super M Vanilla to create a creamy shoe bun filling. Lead us. Oh. Well, first thing is you've got to start warming up your milk or your, our flavoured milk uh, component in here. So all we need to do is bring it up to a point just before boiling, not completely at, at boiling. And then we're going to be adding that into our egg mixture, which we actually need to temper our eggs. But before we do that, mm. let's add in our ingredients. So egg yolks and then an egg, a whole egg. The egg yolks are going to give us wonderful richness, wonderful creaminess, but also going to add a bit of a thickening agent to it as well, but gives that wonderful rich colour that we know in, you know, custard at the end of the day. Mm. Corn flour, that's really what's going to thicken it. A little bit of salt, and then a little bit of caster sugar. Actually, one thing out there, and for everybody else at home, you know, sometimes we think of caster sugar and go, oh, it's a little bit expensive. Yeah. Do this. Take normal, regular sugar, put it into a food processor, and just blend it. <laughs> Homemade, cast of sugar, done. I yep. want for the exact price that you normally use. I love oh, that. Oh, let's not talk about that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> OK, um, so at the end of the day, this is going to help us with that custody component. And Dumi, you decided to go with the Super M as um, what we're heating up on the pan. Yeah, so normally you would use uh, just plain uh, milk, but I'm just saying because we want that additional flavour, we've mm. chosen to, to go with our Super M vanilla. We could use any of the other flavours. So if you perhaps are trying to put some flavour into your creme patissier and maybe give it like a cream soda flavour, you could go with the Super for in, uh, cream soda or any flavor of your choice. Mm. It really is up to, up to you. But Chef, I just want to touch on something. We've got your um, hot milk here. Your Super M is heating up. Do we want it to bubble away or do we literally just want it to be... No, just bring it up to temperature. Because what we're going to do is we want to start to agitate the, the eggs to start cooking the process of the corn flour to actually thicken it. So just bring it up to like literally just be, you know, to a simmering kind of, kind of point. Now you can, you know, to pull this in, in batches, I'm just going to sort of be a little bit more civilised. And uh, <laughs> let's uh, take a little bit of, of milk. A little bit together. Now, firstly, I've put the flour, uh, corn flour into here yeah. to basically break it so there's no lumps. So very important in that stage. I'm just going to sort of throw it all here and sort of mm. go for it. Take a little bit of milk and, you know, sort of pour that into there and then constantly whisk. So what this is, is we bring up the temperature of the eggs to marry with the temperature of the uh, of the milk. But what was very important why we tempered is because I do not want sweet scrambled yes. eggs. Yes. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah? All right. No sweet scrambled eggs. So uh, make sure that the Super M is not completely boiled, but just, you know, br definitely bring up the heat and then slowly but surely add it to the egg Absolutely. mixture. Absolutely. Add it into that egg mixture and then pour that egg mixture back into your actual pot whilst it's on the heat. And then, very important, Polly, you got to keep whisking oh. in there. There are <laughs> demons that lurk at the bottom of this pan. Eggs and heat. Whoa. Chef, I just also want to touch on something, right? You've chosen to use caster sugar, and I know the reason, one of the reasons is because it dissolves quicker. But could it also be because when sugars, sugar and egg mix, there's a term that they say that that sugar actually burns the eggs. So you, is it better mm. to use caster sugar because if it sits for too long, you actually end up having those nodules from the well, yeah, you don't, you, didn't, you don't want that crystallization. Correct. That's what you really want to actually stop there. So you break it out, it breaks down a lot uh, quicker. So it's, you got to think of the, the chemical structure. There's so much that goes on behind the scenes chemically that, you know, things react differently. Yeah. You know, it's like when you think of taking a piece of salt and you like curing a piece of meat, like how we make biltong and vinegar. Yes. That's exactly what sugar is in essence doing to the, the eggs. So that's why it's important you something that's sort of already part broken down yeah. and speeds up the process. And this just keeps sort of whisking and whisking and this will become... Um, to a nice thick consistency, thick custard is very important. Now, how do you know it's cooked yes. and that it is safe for you lovely pregnant ladies, young kids? 
grannies, grandpas. <laughs> and all the above. And everybody above the age of a certain age. Anyway, um, really important is you want to get this above about 84 degrees where it becomes safe to eat. How do I know if I don't have a temperature? When it starts to bubble. bubble. Yep. Mm. So I don't know if we're going to have it in the time. Yes, it's on high. There we go. But I just want um, to show people as well, Chef, since you're talking about that, our cream patisserie is nice and thick now. It's cooled down and so forth. But remember, we are talking about the bubbles that were created by the egg mixture and the raising agent. This is what happens. Once it's baked in the oven, it's going to look like this. And then once your cream is thick enough, you literally just pipe away like that. Wow. And you can enjoy these either cut in half or you just make a hole at the bottom and then fill your babies up and you can enjoy Love them that. as cream pups or as eclairs. It's completely up to you. And I've just had a taste of this cream patisserie. It is so delicious. It is so rich. Very, very creamy. But it's not too much. It's not overpowering. Mm. It's, it's, it's just the perfect balance. Chef, this is what we're talking about when we say baking is a science. Well, there becomes a science in it. And the beauty is you can start adding things into it as well. So you can add some mm. chocolates. You've got a, a chocolate custard, if you if you, if you would like, on, on that there. So, you know, you can put a bit of spice, a little bit of cinnamon, and a little bit of nutmeg as well to sort of zhuzh this up there. So lots of little options there. So this is your creme pat. Actually, with a shoe bun, technically, it should be with a Chantilly cream, mm. which is whipped cream with vanilla. Or if you really want to be fancy, is make a custard and add whipped cream, and you get what we call a diplomat cream. I love that. But well, we did speak <laughs> oh, about no, donning no, no, no. our berets. No, no, no. Keep whisking, keep whisking, else you're gonna get sweet scrambled eggs. And if you do, if you do get sweet scrambled eggs, put them to liquidizer, blitz with a block of ice. <laughs> And you rescued it. Oh, talk about a master <laughs> oh, masterclass. Yes, yes. If you want to rescue yourself in your kitchen at home, simply head over to afternoonexpress.co.za. Chef, keep whisking. Chef, oh, keep goodness. whisking. <laughs> You'll be ambidextrous in this place. <laughs> I'll go. I want of you, Chef. Oh, he's back. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Move. <laughs> Clover Fresh Milk. Made with love by Clover. This looks delicious. We are focusing on baking today. Chef Chart, any last tips and tricks? Yeah, very important. Do not take the cook mixture and put it into there. Make that disappear because guess what? Scary manila might be in there still. So, you know, cooked eggs raw. But take this, pop this into a clean bowl and place it above an ice bath to bring the temperature down radically and as quickly as possible with a little layer of cling film on top mm -hmm. to stop a skin forming. Love it, love it for us and love it for you at home. But we're not done. When we return and when we come back from our break from sweetness, we're going to show you how to whip up a simple yet appetizing dinner in the form of soft bread buns with a sticky, saucy chicken stuffing.
away on this Afternoon Express Masterclass, focusing on all things baking. Now, Tomi, you've got something for the busy moms. I've got something for the busy moms. I've got something for someone who wants to make a quick, delicious dinner, but doesn't have too much time on their hands. Well, let's get into it. If there's a whisk, there's a way, especially for busy moms. Baking always makes everyone's day that much better. But for moms on the go, there isn't always time to get kneading. Well, good news. Celebrity, che celebrity chef Charles Walraven and Dumi will be showing us how to bake a fantastic yet oh-so-simple meal that the whole family will enjoy. Let's see what's on today's menu, Mr. Tongue Twister. Oh, yeah, no. uh, Yesterday, oh, a little bit of a tongue twister indeed. Absolutely. So, some Sometimes, you know, life is too short to be making up your own dough. Yep. Hop down to your local retailer, little bakery, and ask them for some dough already made up. And, you know, here it is. So what you've got here is your dough that's all sort of proved up. And you just want to sort of remove that, slacken up a little bit, and then just dust the surface just like that. And what I want to do is just... Oh, Mm, it smells so smell good, it. I can smell oh, it from here. Goodness, it almost smells like, you know, the moss that we get at this time of year with the fermented uh, mm -hmm. grape. Imagine doing that, actually. You know, again, for the moss bulky bread, maybe you get some of that dough. Oh, I wonder man. who does that. We're going to speak to some nice bakers. But anyway, pre-made um, dough, make it nice and easy. And what I want to do is just don't fiddle around with it too much at all, because we're going to start sort of rolling it out just now. And all we're going to do is just divide it. So get into an equal sort of sided shape, I guess, like a, a rectangle in that sort of form. Mm. And then with your knife, just sort of cut it in there and then cut it in half that way. And let's go into third, 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 and a third. Gotcha. Unless you've got equal parts. If you really want to be fancy and want to get everything absolutely perfect, <laughs> you weigh these out. Probably 50 gram portions, you know? Yeah. Life is not too short for you, but we're not talking about mums. So I was going to say. don't worry, you haven't got time out there, so make big ones, small ones, and everything else in between. And especially when the kids are tearing down the rest of the household, mm -hmm. you need to make sure that you've got the kitchen on lock. Domi, this is what you're so, so good at, making sure that you're balancing the busy baby and also making sure that you're creating mwah, chef's kiss-worthy dishes. Exactly, and what it starts off with, right, we've got, you've got your dough that's already made, you bought it from the store, it's in the fridge, it's chilling, or you You've already rolled it out but you obviously need a filling but mind you filling means you have to have so many other ingredients you need this you need that i say no i say take the simply chicken bites that already have their own sticky barbecue sauce because yeah. what do you get you get the chicken in there and then you've also got the sauce so in essence they are a self self sourcing dish so you don't have to worry one about too many dishes or too many ingredients i'm going to start off by making sure that i get our simply chicken bites into the oven to bake they're going to bake at 220 degrees for only 20 to 25 minutes. So let's just say you came home, just come home from, from work, you've had a busy day, yeah. you don't have a whole three, four hours to be making supper. So this is perfect because it literally just takes about 20 to 25 minutes and even shorter if you're going to be using an air fryer. I put these babies into the oven to bake. Let me just put them into the oven for you. So right now I'm talking about a real chicken product, product that has no pork, no MSG, that's gone into the oven to cook. But I'm also going to be using, making a sauce for them. And like I mentioned, Palisa, you could also use these in the air fryer. That goes into yeah. the oven to bake. If you've got an air fryer, definitely use that. Double up on that. Now, Dumi, double up. How do you make baking so simple for yourself? I make it simple by one, following the step <laughs> that Chef has just said. <laughs> Buy that already made dough from the store, you know, because it's simple, it's easy, it's already all the hard work is done for you. Yeah. And that also is what I like about Simply Chicken because the sauce is already in there as well. I've got these contents that come from the sauce packet and I'm just adding some hot water into this and I'm going to whisk this together and that's already the sauce that we need for this, uh, these saucy buns that we're making. I mean, I've already counted the ingredient chef chart that we've used and I think we're sitting on about five ingredients. Mm -hmm. So what is your favorite ingredients to use when baking in the summer months? Favorite ingredients? Yeah. Well, I love adding flavors. You know, so taking bread like this, or sorry, so it's a dough before it becomes a bread, yeah. and start adding things like sun dried tomatoes, olives, mm. capers, anchovies, rosemary, thyme. So think of your hard herbs that you that are robust that can take the the, the oven temperature and things like that. It's got mm. yeah, got some you know some body, body on it. you know some spices also you know can work you know incredibly well. So. All you want to do is just, you know, I mean, those you can bake off yourselves. I mean, imagine that, you know, imagine some little olives, sun-dried tomatoes, little yeah. sprinkling of cheese on top, mini some pizzas, feta. Mm, you know, definitely. done. So something like that, you can, you know, it becomes really versatile. So what you do is just put a flour and then just sort of roll that out into a sort of a, 
a circle of, of sorts, and then just sort of pop it on a, on a tray, and you know, we're just gonna create a bit of a conveyor belt. What I think is actually really important with, you know, for mums and families out there, get everybody involved, mm. you know, get granny and grandpa, auntie, uncle, you know, get the kids part of the whole experience yeah. Yeah. of touching, feeling things, you know, like this. It's just so important to understand, guys, you know, that is what we have make bread out of. Yeah. You know, what we have rolls, it's something we have every single day. And get them to understand things, you know, like this dough, particularly, and always with your, you know, store-bought doughs, there's a lot of elasticity in it. So you'll mm. see, trying to roll this out, it's not a sort of a, a dough because it's a lot wetter. Mm -hmm. It's not saying that you're going to be able to hold the shape very long. It's going to shrivel back on yeah. itself. But that's the gluten content that's been developed and generally is a pre, uh, it's a premix. Okay, right stunning. Well, it seems like we're well on our way creating this. Dumi is already cradling our delicious Simply <laughs> Chicken Bites into the dough that Chef has already prepared for us. I can see here our finished product. You've added some delicious cheese there, creating a beautiful wheel. Yes, we have, and we've added some Simply Chicken, we've added some sesame seeds on the top, brushed them with some, some um, egg wash into the oven to bake for 20 to 25 minutes, and then it's done. It's done, just like that. I mean, summer afternoons have never smelled so good. To get your hands on this delicious recipe, please do visit afternoonexpress.co.za. And for more quick and easy recipes, follow at Simply Chicken ZA on Instagram. I cannot wait to have a taste of this at the end of the show. Yummy. <laughs> Probably going to have to add another gym session to your workout week because we ha when we come back, well, Chef Chart is standing by to spoil us and spoil our senses with a particularly sinful midweek indulgence. I'm talking moist chocolate cake with a creamy ganache filling. Wow.
back to sweets. Welcome back to the Afternoon Express Kitchen, where we're about to make the most beautiful chocolate cake. Chef Chart, I see your uh, sleeves are rolled up. You ready for this? Oh, absolutely. I'm always ready for a little bit of chocolate <laughs> and decadence. You know, something that's dark and chocolatey and with a bit of coffee in it. Oh. I, I mean, it. a little bit like me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, everyone loves a decadent chocolate cake, but with the addition of Clover Authenticos yogurts, you're bound to have the most delicious chocolate cake every single time. We're also making sure that the inside tastes as good as the outside looks with a chocolate ganache filling. Yummy, right? Oh, all those words yeah. <laughs> coming, coming together. Lovely. Divine. <laughs> So I'm going to start off, kick off with, I guess, with the, the, the chocolate uh, cake base, I guess, really, which is very important. So in my bowl, I've got my eggs, which I've been whisking up here. So I've got them light and fluffy, some lovely aeration in there. And to that, we're going to add in is our oil. Now, oil gives a lovely longevity to, to a cake, and it gives a wonderful sort of springiness to it. But the longevity is what's really key. So mm. if you want a cake that you'll sort of eat in a couple of days' time, when it's got oil in, you know it's going to be a great one for that. And Chef Chara, I can already see, I'm um, looking at that cake base, it almost is is glistening is that also that addition of the of the oil so again very important to oil your your, your base there so i'll jump across to this as you one step ahead um, <laughs> but you can line, line the base with a little bit of uh, sort of uh, you know baking paper yes. just to help it come away very easily spring form only a spring form really is, is necessary if you, um, if you um, are going to not invert it, i.e. like a cheesecake. So then you can't yeah, tip it upside, upside down, down. then you, you, you want a spring form. But with this here, you can just use your standard you know, aluminium uh, baking tins that you get. They work well because this you can literally turn upside down and in, invert. Okay. So with that there, our oil, we're going to put in our, some vanilla for your flavouring in there. So let's just pop that in there, and then your melted chocolate. So this is pretty straightforward. You've got most of your um, wet ingredients, and then you're gonna mix all your dry ingredients together, and then we're gonna bring it together with some hot water, which I'll talk about very shortly. Okay. So that into there, and let's use that spoon, and let's just sort of give that a bit of a mix, and let's start bringing on the, the chocolate flavor. I mean, look at that, starting mm -hmm. to lace. I love that sort of marble effect coming together. I mean, the creaminess already, and just that um, airiness, it almost looks like a cloud. Well, you can imagine, I mean, that's what eggs are. They're so light and fluffy and like little pillows, which is really important. So that's the wet side. So, dry side, in with our flour that we've got is brown sugar. So this is gonna give us another level and dimension of richness. Your cocoa powder, so let's just sort of of pop that into there. Your coffee granules as well. Coffee granules, remember? Yes. Because you want this to dissolve. You don't want little bits of, you know, coffee beans sort of uh, lurking in there. So that. Definitely and then obviously granules. your raisin ingredient, which is your bicarb and your baking powder. Mm. Okay. And then, Chef, when does the Clover Authenticos yogurt come in? That is going to come into our wet ingredients. So that's our dry ingredients there. I'm just going to sort of bring that together mix. so mix all that up so it's all sorry started to be incorporated and then into here we're going to add in our yogurt now i know what one and a half cups is by the way <laughs> so i'm just going to sort of you know pop that it. into into there right so bring all that together now chef i know we're using our clover authenticos which in essence in south africa is the only greek style um uh, yogurt you can find but i i want to find out something the difference between you using a yogurt a buttermilk milk in your in your chocolate cake or, or a mayonnaise or I'm mayonnaise also about you know that. what difference does that so add here you've got the wonderful acidity that you that you've got there so that acidity that comes from the sourness of the of the milk really changes it again going back to our chemical reaction that, mm. that's happening in here so you're going to get something that's going to a give a bit of longevity um but also you're going to get a wonderful moistness to it as as well which is what's really important and what's gorgeous with this cake here so taking all your or most of your wet ingredients into your dry ingredients like that let's mm. give you all the dirty dishes to <laughs> clean in a bit thanks Polly. Gotcha. and i'm just going to start with my spatula i want to keep that air into to a large extent um so just with a spatula just going around and just lift Lifting it around the bowl very gently to incorporate it. Now, it's not going to just all come together. It's going to be a little bit thick to start off with. Mm -hmm. um, and remember, I've got some liquid going into it just now as well. So that's also very important. So whilst this is going on, Tumi, you want to talk what you do on your side? And then yeah. we'll come back to this. I actually, I'm so Perfect. curious because, Tumi, at the end of the day, you are on ganache station. Yes. We did say that it's going to taste as yummy on the inside as it looks on the outside. So um, what has gone into that ganache? All right. So in here, I've got some uh, dark chocolate that we've got, but I've added some hot or warmed up cream 
cream into it to in essence start dissolving it and then get it to the consistency that we like. And then towards the end, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some butter into it just for some decadence. Absolutely. But I know that one thing that we've done here is that we're using our Clover Authenticos, which is the plain flavor. Mm -hmm. But I know, Chef, it's a lot of flavors here. It's a chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. But we've also got the Authenticos that comes in coconut. So we could definitely do that, add mm. that flavor just wow. for a touch of coconut into our chocolate. And then I can well. also see you've got an array of different chocolates array. there just to decorate the top with. So if you do go for the coconut, yeah. you can also then, that, that's another addition exactly. you can add. You could also add that flavor of the coconut in there. You could add your, your coconut cream. You can add coconut flakes on it as well. I'm just going to keep icing this cake because when you mm. said chocolate cake, I was like, heaven. All right, so I'm going to keep adding this. We've got our ganache that we just made. It's nice and thick. It's nice and set. And then I'm just going to add all those other ingredients. Okay, girl, let me leave you on that stage. Yeah, but you know I can't leave. Wait, wait, <laughs> let me have a taste. Let me have a taste of this ganache. Okay, now I can leave you. Mm. Oh, oh, wow. Right. Really delicious. Mmm. Uh, creamy. Well, yes, that's chocolatey. Now, <laughs> I'm making chocolatey here now. So I think what I'm adding in here wow. is actually hot water. Now, why am I adding hot water? Adding hot water, I'm blooming the cocoa powder. All right. Mm. So by blooming that cocoa powder, I'm actually bringing the cocoa to life. I'm rehydrating cocoa powder because basically it's just cocoa mass that has been um, dried out. So I'm really intensifying to get that wonderful chocolatey flavor by adding hot water, water to this mixture. Remember I was talking about early on with the uh, flour and hot water of bringing those two together, you get that gelatinous kind of texture. It's exactly what I do. So I'm in essence speeding up the process mm. of cooking. Yeah, sometimes you have a, a tart or a, a torte recipe and it adds, adds, asks you to heat it up beforehand. Yeah. Basically what you're getting, you're getting a double proof. You know, we talk about double proof with yeast. This you're getting double proof by activating the bicarb and the baking powder now with the actual hot water. Then it's going to go to the oven and be heated up again mm. and it's going to basically give us a second rise. So you're going to get that wonderful rise coming through but you're also going to get a wonderful denseness with the cake which is lovely and moist and also at the end of the day when it's finished baking it's going to have a, a much sort of tighter crumb, not a loose crumb mm. that's going to be sort of you know sort of all over the place and you can't put that gorgeous ganache on there. You want it to come together beautifully so you can make our decorating as easy as what Dumi is doing but if you'd like to get your hands on this recipe you already know where to go afternoonexpress.co.za chefs you've done it again voila there is a classic mayonnaise that brings out the traditional french in three levels of tanginess the mild classic the medium classic the strong classic tangy the way you love it made with love by clover now here in the Afternoon Express Loft, not only do we like to test your knowledge in the kitchen, but we also like to test your knowledge on all things food. So chefs, I hope you're ready. Oh. Let's do this. Let's again. <laughs> oh my goodness, you lost. Okay. We love All the right. games. I oh. mean, as always, we're having so much fun in studio <laughs> with Chef Charts. So before we get into anything else, it's time to play a bit of a game called Food Word Scramble, where we will have to test your, um, you know, deciphering skills here. Chef Charts, are you ready for it? Do me, you ready? Sure. I'm ready. Okay. All right. Now listen, we've ready. got eight words that have been scrambled up all relating to food, so let's see how you can decode. Okay. Are you ready for it? Some decoding. Absolutely, oh goodness, we're gonna okay. have this, the words pop up on screen. Here's the first word. What word is that? Do me. Yes, do That looks like bread. Let's see yep. if it's bread. Let's unscramble that ah! word. Yay! Yay! After the last few games, I needed to redeem myself, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I let you win this time, Tumi? Because I think oh. I won the last time, didn't I? Yes, you did. Mm. Dumi off to a fiery start. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, let's see if Chef Chart can, you know, come back with the comeback. Oh, here we go. Word number two. Oh, Chart. Yes, Chart. Oh. <gasps> chart said his name, so. Chocolate. Uh. Let's see if it's chocolate. Let's unscramble that word. Ooh, Absolutely. <laughs> I want to say something else. <laughs> whoopsie. It is indeed chocolate. I mean, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to add one more little span in the room. Yes, one span in the room, one more rule. If you say your name, you have five seconds to say okay. your word. And if you can't give it in five seconds, it automatically goes to your component, okay? okay. Your competitor. Okay. Let's get word number three up on board. What is that word? Remember, it's about. Um, do me? Yes, Dumza. Is that baking? Let's unscramble oh, no. the word and let's see if it's Yay! Yay! <laughs> we are almost halfway through this game and our oh. chefs are buzzing through it. But this is what I like to see. Clearly they know what they're doing. <laughs> let's get word number four up on board. What word chart. is that? Yes, Chef Chart. What are we making today? Dough. 
Let's mm. unscramble the word. And let's okay. see, absolutely, the word is well done. dough. It's a capital letter that starts. Yes. Very nice, huh? <laughs> yeah, true. It's like, you know, those words that you... If, as long as you've got the first word and the last... Sorry, the first, first letter, letter and the last letter is fine. But now this... That's where the trick yeah, is. That's where the yeah. is that uh, I was capital. I was actually speaking to our producers and I said, listen, today you made sure. <laughs> the capitals definitely yeah, throw you off. Oh. That's what throws us completely off. You, know, you keep like your eye keeps diverting <laughs> back to you. you know? <sighs> okay, so so far we are halfway through our gorgeous, fun game and I hope that you're playing at home, engaged with us on social media and let us know your guesses. Can you unscramble the words? Can you decipher what we're playing here in Word Scramble? But the scoreboard right now is 2-2. I do believe. Yeah. So it oh. is a draw. Mm -hmm. We are four words to go and let's see who can run away with the win. Let's, let's get oh. our next word up on board. Now, Charts. yes, charts. Get your guns up, but you need some buns. <laughs> <laughs> You that is actually me and Chef Charts are just, you know, I saw you going there. Absolutely, it is. I wouldn't stand up, brother. No, 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 stand up. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we're, we're here for that too. It is after midday, so we can get a little risque in the dark. Okay, um, right now, Chef Chart has just worked away with one more. Dumi, can you guess what this word is? Or well, Chef Chart might as well uh, beat you there. Ooh. Dumi? Yes, Dumza. It is yo yogurt. Let's it's see if yogurt. it's yogurt. Hey, Absolutely. I don't trust my well team anymore, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, yeah. I'm yeah. trust issues here. <laughs> okay, well, it seems as if we're neck and neck. You both are equally came ready oh. today, and I love that. Let's put the next word up on board. Now, what, this one is the easiest, I personally yeah. think. Just say your name if you know what it is. Chart, are you? Are you? Are you? Are you? Are you? Is Chart really acting? Do you not know what that word is, Chart? I'm trying to think what I'm it is. I'm sure everyone at home has already got it. Dumi, are you doing this on purpose? Are you, I'm, are you, I'm, you don't know what the word is. Com, my, I'm my, trying to think of what the word is. Actually. Or maybe Dumi really doesn't know what the word is. I do. Give us the word. It's oh. Dumi, it's vanilla. Let, yabba, yabba, yabba. <laughs> Guys, I went through the dictionary this time. I looked at the food dictionary and I scrambled the words in my head. I was like, next time we play this game, I want to be ready. <laughs> okay, well, right now, Dumi is leading, but I'm going to also put another span in the works. And I'm going to say this last one, when it takes all. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, huh? mm -hmm. okay. okay. So the stakes are extremely high. Let's put the final word on board. What word is that, huh? Ooh. Mm. Yeah. Let's shake up those Ooh, brains. Charts. Yes, she charts. Well, we did earlier, actually. What is it? Oh, for that moment of you talk too much. <laughs> shoo. You just answered it. <laughs> shoo. Yes, shoo. Yes. Oh, I you thought you said it. shoo. 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 And shoo. 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 But oh, also, yeah. how about the pot calling the kettle black? I hate to give him <laughs> the win, but congratulations, <laughs> Chef Chart. Um, you absolutely uh, walked away with today's I'm sorry, you're such scramble. a good player. I love playing with you. I thought we were friends, but okay. Yeah, we are still. Well, on this very tense note, we will see you after these. <laughs> Cheers. Express yourself. Our pharmacies are on the front line of healthcare. This is Pharmacy of the Week. It is actually a big privilege to serve my community, not only in providing pharmaceutical care for them, but being a community pharmacist that's been here for a long time. Last year, Motherwell was the epicenter of the second wave. Um, so it was, it was a very busy time for us. We had to play a role in getting the medication to the people and that's when we started our delivery service. People had to self-care before they even got the virus. They had to boost their immune system and we became a centre for them to ask questions on what medication they can use to save care so that they can strengthen their immune system before COVID um, could get them. Pharmacy of the Week. Proudly brought to you by Adcock Ingram OTC, sponsors of Brave. With schools opening again, teachers and parents will face difficult situations like tummy cramps, teething, pain and fever, scratches and scrapes, allergies and coughs. Adcock Ingram OTC brings you a wide range of products to help parents take care of those challenges. Brought to you by Adcock Ingram OTC sponsors of Brave.
welcome back to this baking masterclass on Afternoon Express. And we're on our final recipe, so definitely pay attention. You cannot call yourself a baker until you have mastered the scone. And naturally, here to help us perfect the most delicious buttery and crumbly scone is our favorite chef chart. And we aren't just making ordinary scones, we're making scones with a twist and a crunch. We are making muesli scones, yum. Oh, a little bit of muesli in the morning, you know? <laughs> yeah, but scones, I mean, one of those basic things that we all learn at, at uh, culinary school in some form or another, but I think we all enjoy at home mm. making. And they are something so simple, they need a little bit of respect because they actually can go wrong Horribly. very quickly. All right, but let's start off with our base. It's always got um, uh, flour, and to that we're going to add in some butter. So that butter, what you want to do there is basically start just sort of cutting it into your um, into your flour, which you can just literally just do in this kind of manner. You can get your fingers in there and start sort of going through this to actually get it to resemble breadcrumb. So what we want to do is take the texture of butter in essence and make it resemble flour mm. at the end of the day. So in here, just going to sort of keep working that there. Now, into there, we're going to then create a little bit of a well and add in our caster sugar. And again, caster sugar is very important because it's a, lot, it's a lot smaller. It's going to coat our flour quickly because this is a quick bake. Well, it's a quick make and a quick bake. And then, of course, my favourite oh, is honey, honey, honey. And that's going to help with a wonderful texture on the crust of a scone. So actually, if you want a softer scone, then omit the honey. Okay, okay, I got so that. So do that, and then you can add some uh, cinnamon just to sort of warm it up. Any warm sort of spice, nutmeg, mm. what other spices would you add in there to me? Probably add a little bit of clove, just a touch yeah, of Yeah, a touch, touch of clove on, on that there. And then in with some milk. So pop that into there, and then start sort of bringing that together very gently. Now, a scone, cardinal rule. Mm. Mix it very quickly, very softly, very gently, and then you're done. Okay. That's it. And then do not over mix this by any means. Really important. So at this point, do we add our music? Because you obviously don't want um, uh, you want it to, to be over mixed. So like over mixed. Yeah. So I'm going to get to a point of where I don't want to finish mixing this. Oh, right? Okay. I don't want to get a point of where this is all incorporated. So what we're going to do is just break this in together. So we about sort of two thirds of the mixture sort of combined in there, and then we can start going in with our bit of muesli and whatever sort of filling, you know, flavour filling you want to add into Stunning. there as well. And this is what makes our scone super, super special because the Jungle Mixed Berry Muesli adds a fantastic crunch with real fruit. It tastes, makes the, the taste of the scones that much better. Leaving the butter nodules, it helps also during the baking to create steam and give the scones their light and area crumb. Jungle muesli is also high in fiber and energy, which will keep you fuller for longer. This is a guilt-free scone. Absolutely. It is one of those things that makes you feel good that you got some of that muesli in there. And then just bring it together with your hands, pop that straight onto the surface, and just bring that together. It's as simple as that. Very quickly, very gently, you do not want to overwork this and develop the glutens at all. Mm -hmm. So just keep working that so you've got all that wonderful, you can see the butter incorporating mm -hmm. into the actual um, dough itself with the milk as well. And then just bring that together until it forms this wonderful dough that you can actually roll out a bit like exactly what uh, Tumi is doing on, on there. Now, Domi, on your station, um, this I also want to incorporate our social media question here, which was, what are some of the baking tips that you kind of live by? We're making scones, and so many people just get scones wrong. So what would be your baking tip here? Especially with when it comes to these kind of bakes. A scone, like we've touched on it, Chef, about the butter. You can also use cold butter. You know, take your butter, and instead of just adding it in there, grate it into your scones, and then after you've grated it, you literally just mix it up with your spoon. Because what that does is it still allows you to have those uh, little butter nodules that then, like we said, creates the steam, creates those layers that give you a nice flaky scone versus a, a, a dry one, you know? And like we said, Chef, with this type, type of dough, we're using all-purpose flour, but we could also use like a, a bran flour as well. It just means you'd have to change your quantities here and there because of the moisture Absolutely. content. Absolutely. Yeah. And here's another tip, by the way. Mm. Move over! Sorry, I'm yeah. in your space. When you actually cut your scones, go straight down and vertically only. Yeah. Okay. Because that is going to get your scone to actually pop up straight, mm. because if you go like, wee, wee, mm. wee, guess where your scone's gonna go, It'll guys? It'll also go wee, wee. It's gonna go wee, wee in the baking. So, you know, uh. actually make sure you cut it down 
virtually straight. Try not to use a glass because, I mean, a glass is a, a, an apparatus we can use mm. to get the disc. I mean, that's if you really don't have an actual cookie cutter. But that creates a vacuum. And what happens with that mm. vacuum, it actually pulls the surface of the scone down and actually tightens it up and, like, creates a bit of a, a lid, a seal on the top, and it can't sort of yeah. bake and get that heat underneath there. Mm. So that's a nice little sort of thing there. But that goes into a nice hot oven, 180 degrees, until likely golden brown. You can put a little bit of egg wash, a little bit of uh, milk, on the top, I don't know if you do that at home. Yeah, I'll brush with a uh, little egg wash, add more texture with those uh, jungle berry mousse berry absolutely. on top. Pop that into there, into the oven, you know, 12 to 15 minutes mm. and baked. But my thing with scones mm. is, does, when you start layering it all up, yes. do you put the cream on first and then the jam, or the jam <laughs> and the cream? What do you That do? is a good one. I actually, um, I omit the cream. I love myself some cheese and jam scones. So okay, I first put and the jam, jam and okay. then I put the cheese, cheese? on top. I do Jimmy? jam, and, che jam, and, then cream. jam the and then cream. Jam and then cream. Jam is heavier and then the cream. Yeah, okay. All right, so it depends on where you are. So up north of England, they, the, they um, make sure you put the cream on first and then the jam. Okay. And then if you're actually down in the south, it's the other way around. So I don't know what everyone does at home, but let me know. I want to know. Where do you put it? Stunning. Let's keep the conversation going on our social media uh, pages. Let us know what some of your baking tips are. And as Chef has just asked, what do you put first? Do you put the cream or the jam or the jam and then the cream? But either way, to get <laughs> your hands on this delicious muesli scone recipe, please do head over to afternoonexpress.co.za. I love this. Even with the real uh, strawberries. Delicious. What's beta glucan? Hello, do you know what beta glucan is? What is beta glucan? No one knows what beta glucan is. Beta glucan is a natural fiber in jungle oats that helps lower cholesterol and keep hearts well. Yes. Jungle, do life with heart. Whew. Yes, do me let out, Chef Chart. Congratulations to you both. You've done it again. Only oh. a pleasure. <laughs> All the time. I mean, that was like fun, like some wonderful ideas, you know. Yeah, I mean, deliciousness. look at these gorgeous dishes that you can actually recreate at home, I think, quite mm. interestingly, if I might say so myself. Absolutely. I mean, we've created something savory, so if you're more of a savory treat kind of person, maybe um, these delicious chicken filled buns is more your mix. Or if you got a sweet tooth, Dumi, you took, took care of us there. Yes, we've made some shoe pastry, which from there we made some profiteroles or shoe buns that we mm. filled with the delicious creme patissio or custard cream, and then we made our decadent, can I take this home by the way, this chocolate cake that looks absolutely gorgeous. It's screaming my name, and yeah. if you want to have this recipe, you can always just oh. go on to afternoonexpress.co.za. Well, thank you so much, Chef Charts, for oh, coming through, as always. Pleasure. Do me, always a pleasure to see you, girl. When bake, bake some more, bake me some more. But I'm this is only week. the beginning <laughs> of the week that marks the end of yet another marvelous masterclass, brought to you by the Afternoon Express team and Chef Chart. The most of us, baking can be a daunting science but we hope that the lessons learned today make you a little less apprehensive to switch on the oven and prepare something truly divine there's just so much more to learn so join us again on thursday from 5 30 p.m as baking week on afternoon express continues but until then city good night stay safe and happy eating umzanzi goodbye Say it with flavor, taste, and aroma, so they'll know it was made with love by Clover. Another feel good production.